Hello world, welcome to the 241st video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. And so if you've been following along my videos, I have created some automation that allows me to keep up with local politics. And I wanted to do another program and I thought it was just going to be a simple web scraping program, but it wasn't. And so it is web scraping, it is optical recognition, and it is also reading PDF. So in this video, we're going to go through all three as we attempt to read a file from our local government. And so I live in Louisiana, and we do our property taxes using a system called millage. And that is uh, your assessed value of your home multiplied by what's called a mill for different um, agencies and I've created a whole video about that and uh, if you want to watch that you can uh, watch it here but the basic of it is um, during this uh, agency called the police jury they have agendas for upcoming meetings and this is where they decide to vote or they actually vote on increasing our property taxes and so I want to be kept abreast of that at all times and so I want to programmatically read these agendas. And so I created a program that goes to this website right here, finds the most recent agenda that's published, and then finds out if it has the word mill or millage in it. And that way I can go read it if it does. And so uh, I'll go through the code in a second, but let's run this. So let me run it. And then it's going to say checking this link right here. And so it said it's no readable text found and now it's falling back to optical recognition. And then using optical recognition, it decided there's no millage or mill found in the agenda. So before we go to the code, why did it say no readable text found? So what happens is these are PDF files. So let me click on this. And so this opens like a normal PDF and here it is and you should be able to find words in it. The problem with it is this is a what I'm assuming a picture or an unedited uneditable version of a PDF file. So I think they might have scanned it to a PDF. I'm not sure if you're just using not Python, you would go to edit and it would do its own optical recognition. All right. And so uh, let's actually cancel that and go back in it. And let me show you why this is important. And so I'm going to find the unique thing that's, um, yeah, let's try to find this MPC right here. So let's go to control F and go MPC and try to find it zero. Let's capitalize it, even though you don't need to do that. It still says it. What about this word right here, policy? It can't find it, right? And so uh, it can't read the words. And we're not even in Python. So if you go to edit, um, there we go. And then type in policy, MPC. It still doesn't find it, right? But with this program here, so let's say I don't want to look for millage or mill and I wanted to look for MPC. Let's run it again and see if it's able to find that word MPC. Now you and I know that MPC is on there. So again, no readable text. Now it's reading an optical recognition using PyTesseract. And now I didn't change the print statement, but it says found millage or mill in the agenda. All right, so that's how we know it works. So let's fall out of that. So we're using two techniques to read a PDF file. First, we're going to read it using PyPDF2, and we're gonna to try to read it as a PDF file. If that doesn't work, it says no readable text found, then we're gonna use PyTesseract to uh, find the text, which is what we did in this scenario here. So I've done a whole video, a uh, much expanded video on PyTesseract, which you can watch here. 
but I'm going to go over some quick installation notes now. So first we do our standard libraries, we're going to import requests, import IO, import RE, that's regular expressions. Then from URL lib library dot parse import URL join. Those are all standard libraries. You don't need to pip install those. So either using if you're in PyCharm, go file settings. Then your interpreter. Oh, I'm sorry. Then your Python interpreter. Click on plus and find Py Py PDF two. Go ahead and install that package here and then find Py Tesseract and install that package. And before you run either of those programs, you're going to have to import or install two more libraries. So if you're not using PyCharm, you can go to and you're using Windows type CMD and then you can go pip install Py PDF2. And then after that installs, you can go Pi Tesseract and install those. All right, but what you also need to do is install, before you use Pi PDF2, Poplar. And to do that, you go to this uh, GitHub right here. Then you're going to ins uh, download the zip. And then once you do, uh, let me show you an example. This is what it looks like. So you can go ahead and extract this all and you can extract it to just C drive and then Poplar. So let's go to file explorer, see what I'm talking about. Go ahead and export all to your C drive and then Poplar. And then go ahead and click inside this folder. Then library and then bin. And then stop here and then go into your search bar and click edit uh, system there you go or you can just type in environment all right and then in system properties click environmental variables and then under this system variables under path go ahead and click edit and then up here just click anywhere in here and copy this right here and then go new and then copy it and paste by control V or right clicking paste. I've already done it here and then press OK. And that is how you add this uh, poplar into your C drive. OK, Pi Tesseract actually has an executable file. So go ahead and download this and use the wizard. The wizard will automatically install it into your program files. And then it should say program files, Tesseract OCR, stop here, and then go to edit the system environment variables. Here, go back to path, go to new, Oops, go to edit and then new and then copy and paste this right here. And then go new and then paste it like that. I already did it, so I'm going to cancel. Make sure that didn't save yet. So now I have this poplar in my path and my tesseract in my path. So that is how you install poplar and pi tesseract. All right, and then you'll need to download Beautiful Soup 4 by going here. Beautiful Soup 4 here and then. Uh, now, when you install uh, BS Beautiful Soup 4, it's actually called from BS4 import Beautiful Soup, not from Beautiful Soup 4. All right, so now that we have all of those downloaded, first you enter the URL that you want to web scrape. So that is this page right here. Then we're going to create an empty uh, list called PDF links. The reason why I did this is because I stored, I did testing on this for five. So I downloaded the last five links. You don't have to do this if you don't want. 
And then um, this is kind of unique to this website, but just in case you need to do PDFs, this is how you do it. So from iframe in soup.findall, we're gonna look for iframe. Then the source equals iframe.get, all the SRCs. So these are the HTML tags. If the source has, if there's a source, an SRC HTML tag, and it has the word PDF in that source, then we're going to add the full link, which is joining the URL, which is up here, to this source. And then we're going to embed the whole link into this um, list here. And sorry, I skipped over something. My mouse went too fast. Um, with any beautiful soup, we're gonna go response equals request.get pass it whatever URL you're trying to get. And then I put this for testing purposes, um, response.raise for status. That will just print a response if I wanted to. Um, you don't have to do that. Then soup equals beautiful soup, response.text, and we're gonna use the html.parser. If you're using new PyCharm, don't type in this features right here. This automatically does it through PyCharm, okay? So now we're gonna go inside that iframe and then for link in soup.findall, we're going to find all the um, A, the HTML tags, make sure it has a href connected to it. And then we're gonna store that in the link. And then the full link, we're going to attach the URL to the href again. The title is going to be just the text and we're going to strip the URL from it. And then we're gonna append the title to the, uh, the title and the full link to this list as well. All right, so now we have a PDF list. So if you're unfamiliar with web scraping, you can go to whatever page you want to web scrape and either go on the page and press F12, which will open the inspect button or you can click on the link or whatever you're trying to web scrape, right click on it and then type inspect. And I do it two times. I don't know what a third time does. Yep, just twice to get all the way down in the bottom. And as you can see, this has a href and it has PDF in the title, right? And that is required for what I want to collect. So right now, the PDF list equals PDF links and it only has the last one. During testing um, phases, I wanted to get the last five agenda items and you just switch that to five. I want just the one. And then we're gonna pass it. So for every title and link in the PDF list, right now this list is filled with all of them. Um, I just want the last one. The PDF URL is just the link title. I have these print statements for testing. So that's the first phase, right? I did all of that to web scrape this URL right here. Okay, so once you have that, oops, then we're gonna skip these functions for now. And then we're going to scan the agenda. And then we're going to go to this function called scan agenda and pass it the PDF URL. So let's go to scan the agenda, right? So we have this PDF URL. So first we have a print statement and you can tell this is a chat GPT helped code because it has these funny, I don't use these little symbols in my code, but I don't know, it li I like it. So first we're gonna print checking the URL. Then we're going to download that PDF URL using this function. And then we're gonna store all that information into what's called PDF bytes. So let's go to the download PDF function. So scroll all the way up. So we're going to go response equals request.get the URL. Uh, again, raise for status, and then we're gonna return all that content. That's all this does, similar to the beautiful soup response. So now we go back to our scan agenda. All that response.content is returned into this PDF bytes. And then we're gonna to try to use it using normal extraction methods using PyPDF2. So you go to extract 
text standard function. Okay, here is extract text standard. So we're going to go reader equals PDF reader, IO dot bytes, big IO, pass it the PDF bytes. This is an empty text string. And for page in reader dot pages, page text equals page dot extract text. If page text, so basically if the page text exists, then the text now equal plus equals page text. So right now it's empty. If there is actual text, it's going to add it to this text string and then we're going to return it. All right, so we go back to scan agenda. So that text, if it was able to find that extract, uh, if it was able to use PI PDF, now you have information in, in your text. If not, so if the length of this text.strip is less than 100 characters, right? So that means there's very little text. So it was probably a multiply, multi, uh, scanned PDF. Um, then it's going to print no readable text found falling back to optical recognition. Again, chat GPT loves these symbols. Now we're going to go text equals extract text using OCR function. So we come up here, pass it the PDF bytes. Images equals confer, convert from bytes. We're passing it the PDF bytes. So that is convert from bytes, which is down here. Oh, no, this is a uh, method that's already uh, in uh, PyTesseract. So text, again, empty text. So for image in the images, it's going to say text plus equals PyTesseract dot image to string, and then you pass it the image. Right, so every image that it takes from your PDF file, it's going to change all of that to a string and then it adds to text. And now it's going to go return to text. And now it's going to say if regular expressions dot search, if re dot search, the pattern, this is PyCharm right here, don't type this in. It's going to look for MPC, but actually going to look for millage or mill. Right, this is an or symbol in this scenario. In the text, we're going to ignore the case. Then we're going to print found the millage or mill. If not, we're going to print no millage or mill found in agenda. All right, so in this video, we covered PI PDF2, which we imported up here. Convert from bytes. This is a method that comes from PDF2 image. We also went over PyTesseract and we went all over normal, beautiful soup web scraping. So if you think you're just going to go into ChatGPT or Grok or whatever and say, hey, please web scrape this right here and look for millage, just know that you're going to have to know how to use these other libraries to explain to ChatGPT, hey, that didn't work. Using beautiful soup didn't work. And then it's going to say, oh, man, maybe we should use PyPDF2 since it's a PDF file. Great. It's going to give you a PyPDF file. Then that's not going to work because this is a scanned PDF, right? And then you're going to say, hey, that's a scanned PDF. That doesn't work with PyPDF. And it's going to say, great, you have to use PyTesseract. Then you're going to just copy and paste it from ChatGPT, and you're going to get an error saying PyPDF2 didn't work. And it's going to say, oh, you need Poplar. And then you're going to try to use PyTesseract and you're going to say, oh, you didn't pip, you pip installed it, but you didn't actually install it. So that's what my videos are here to help you. These are completed projects. These aren't tutorials, um, but it tells you how to kind of walk through programming in your head. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're using Python to keep your local governments accountable. And if you enjoyed this video, like the video and leave a comment. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.